God bless you guys. Sugar Sunday here with today's Sunday School lesson uh, for June 21st. I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, and I pray that the Lord continues to help you and guide you during this time of social distancing. Um, it's been odd, right, since March to just not be able to see each other. We're almost at July and 2020 has definitely been um, something that no one ever imagined, right? We had our plans, we had our thoughts, but the Lord has the way and it's always beautiful and marvelous and just miraculous to see how he works, amen? But um, like I said, today's lesson is um, based on Gideon. Last week, uh, Brother Mike gave a great lesson on the call of Gideon. So today we're going to see how after Gideon's been called, when he's found himself incapable, right? Because he said, hey, I'm a poor man. I'm the weakest of my clan. Um, why would you call on me, Lord, right? But the Lord called on him. The Lord had his eye on him because he knew that through his weakness, um, he was going to make him strong. Because the Lord is always the one who likes to take, or not who likes, the Lord's always the one who, who takes all the honor and all the glory. All things are possible because of God. And not because of our, our own strength. We can't do anything on our own strength. But we know that with God all things are possible. So God made sure that he selected Gideon. Because he wanted to show Gideon what he was capable with the Lord's help. With the Lord's guidance. With the Lord's power. Amen. And that's always a beautiful thing to see when one finds himself incapable. How the Lord shows you. Hey, if you trust on me. If you lean on me. If you Follow me, I will show you great things that you wouldn't even understand, amen? Because the Lord opens doors that we would see impossible. But let us go ahead and focus today on today's lesson. Um, so now we know Gideon's been called. So Gideon's going to go in and with the Lord's help defeat the Midianites, which is the enemy. Uh, we know that again, the Israelites found themselves in the same cycle that we've been talking about, which is... Um, you know, where they're delivered and they live happily, but then they forget about God's ways um, because they live happy while they're serving the Lord, right? They're following his commands, but then they forget and they go off in sin and they do their own thing. Um, the Lord becomes upset, right? And then the, um, the, the Israelites are oppressed by the enemy. So in this case, last week we found that um, Israelites were now oppressed again by the Midianites and they had they turned to the Lord again and said, Lord, help us. We forgive us. They surrendered, right? And they called the Lord for help. So the Lord um, heard their cry, called Gideon. And now we're um, in the, the part of the lesson where Gideon, with the Lord's help, now defeats the enemy. So we're going to learn more about that today. But before we continue, let's go ahead and pray. And let's just ask the Lord to guide us and to help us and, you know, for His Holy Spirit just to work in our hearts and, and give us the words um, an understanding that we need so that we can uh, definitely gain what we need to gain from this, which is faith. Amen. So let us pray. Dear Lord, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus, Father. I just want to honor and glorify your holy name, Father, and thank you so much for all that you've done. Holy Spirit, I ask that you take control of my words, my actions, and my thoughts. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you use me as a vessel that I am, Father, to teach this lesson, God, because I'm not capable on my own, Lord, as Gideon was incapable, God, but I trust in you, God, that through my weakness, God, you are strong, Lord. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you guide me, Lord, that you penetrate this lesson in the depths of our hearts, God, and that includes mine, Lord, that we may learn, Father, what, the, what we need to learn, Father, what, that we may take, God, what it is that you want to teach us, Lord both the youth and myself, Lord, and anyone who's watching. Holy Spirit, guide us, help us, Lord. Strengthen us, Lord, through this lesson, God, that we may just know, God, that nothing's impossible with you, Lord, and that you call us, Lord, by name. You know our name, God. You're watching over us, Lord, and you have a purpose for every single one of us. We honor you and we glorify you and we praise your holy name. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So, let us go ahead and turn our book to Judges, um, chapter 7. We're going to read verses 9 through 21. If you don't have your Bible, um, or if you don't have your book, I'm sorry, go ahead and turn to your Bible. Like I said, it's Judges, chapter 7, verses 9 through 21. So if you want to turn there now, please do so. I'll give you guys a few seconds as we get ready here. Um, and I'm going to read through the verses. We're going to read verses 9 through 21, and then we'll go ahead and um, learn about them more in depth. 
after we're done. So let's go ahead and read chapter 7, verse 9 through 21. Amen. And we read it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it says, the sign of victory. That's the title of this, of this, um, these verses right here. And it says, and it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, arise, get you down unto the host, for I have delivered it into your hand. But if you fear to go down, go with Pharaoh, your servant, down to the host. The host, in this case, was the enemy. And you shall hear what they say. And afterwards shall your hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then he went down with Pharaoh, his servant, unto the outside of the armed men who were in the host. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude. And their camels were without number as the sand by the seaside for multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man who told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream. And lo, a cake of barley bread stumbled into the host of Midian and came unto a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it, that the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, so again, just really quick, um, we know that Gideon, or the Lord told Gideon, go down to the tents of the enemy and see what they have to say. So that's what we're listening at. We're listening at two fellows in the tent talking to each other. And his fellow answered and said, this is nothing else save the sword of Gideon and the son of Joash, a man of Israel. For unto his hand has God delivered Midian and all the host. And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream. So again, Gideon hears these two enemies in a tent talking about a dream. It says, and it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshipped and returned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has delivered into your hand the host of Midian. And he divided the three hundred men into three companies. And he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me, and do likewise, and behold, when it come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so you shall do. When I blow with a trumpet, and I and all who are with me, then blow the trumpets also on every side of all the camp, and say, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men who were with him came unto the outset of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch, and they had but newly set the watch. And they blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers and were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow withal. And they cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp, and all the host ran and cried and fled. That was verse 21. So now um, let us go ahead and talk more in depth about each verse and see what everything means. Um, because obviously sometimes we read and, you know, it doesn't make sense. We don't understand what the Lord's trying to show us. Um, but in this case, you know, let us get a little bit more into depth, right? So we know here that, um, again, Gideon's been selected by the Lord to go and defeat the enemy after Israel has cried out and, um, you know, they've had enough. So Gideon has been selected. So in preparation to go fight against the Midianites, um, Gideon assembles an army. Um, initially, the army was um, an army or a men of 32,000 men. So the army was made up of 32,000 men. Um, and that may sound like a lot, right? I mean, 32,000 men sounds like a lot. But in Gideon's eyes, it wasn't um, powerful enough or big enough to defeat the Midianites, who um, at that time was about 135,000 soldiers. So Gideon's like, mm, I'm fight. I only have thirty two thousand men, and I had to fight against one hundred and thirty five thousand men. Like it didn't make sense. The math did not make sense, right? 
And Gideon, again, he was doubtful. He's like, I need more men, not fewer. However, God is always aware of our thoughts. He always knows what we're thinking. He knows our hearts. I mean, we can't fool God. God just knows everything before we even think it, right? So that's why it's good to always know that the Lord is always watching, hear us. He's always present. He's in everything. He Remember, he knows all. He sees all and he hears all. The Lord is just mighty. Amen. And so, again, God is always always aware of the human. You know, humans like to always take on all the credit. They like to say, oh, I did this and, you know, I did this. You know, and unfortunately, that's a mistake that we make. We should always give the Lord all the honor and all the glory and all the credit for everything that we accomplish because it's only through Him that we can do things. Amen. It's only through His strength that we're capable of doing things. And so, um, again, the Lord always knows the tendency of, of a human wanting to take all the credit when something good happens, right? But when something bad happens, like we're like, oh, we didn't do that, right? We, we don't like to take um, any credit for when bad things happen. We always usually blame someone else. But um, in this case, even with 32,000 men fighting against 135,000 men, the Lord told Gideon, um, Gideon, I think, that's too many people. 32,000 men is way too many people. And so he told Gideon, make sure you tell everyone who is fearful to go home. So Gideon was reluctant, but he said, everyone who is fearful, go home. You need to remember that Gideon himself was not, he wasn't raised a warrior. So he had to trust the Lord. And that's perfectly, that's exactly what the Lord wanted. He had selected someone who would trust his God's understanding and not his own and Gideon was a perfect individual because Gideon had no background as an as a leader as a military man right so even though for Gideon's in Gideon's mind he's like wait you're telling me to tell people to go home and um Gideon trusted God because Gideon didn't know what he was doing so he's like okay Lord um I'll tell everyone that whoever's fearful to walk away right so when Gideon said everyone who's not too brave or not you know, who's fearful, go home. Um, the Bible says that Gideon was only left with 10,000 men. So he started off with 32,000, and now he's only left with 10,000 men. So that means that 22,000 men were fearful, okay? They had fear. So he told, so even then, God said, um, Gideon, I think, think this is too many men still you know the Lord wants to take all the honor and all the glory he wants to make sure that we know that he's present you know he the Lord wants us to understand that he's present and it's because of him that things happen it's because of him that mountains are moved it is because of him you know that um things things change right so the Lord always wants to work um to make us understand that it is by him that things are, are possible. So um, in this case, he said, Gideon, 10,000 men is still too many, right? So he said, I need you to do a watchfulness test, okay? So what that means is that the Lord wanted to give these 10,000 men the opportunity to show with their actions, you know? So um, the Lord said, give them the opportunity to drink. Take them to, you know, the, he said, take them to go get something to drink. And the, uh, most of the men, it says that when they went to go get a drink from the spring, it says most of the men got down on their knees to drink from the spring. And it says, but God chose to retain only the 300 men who brought one hand to their mouth to drink. So they kind of laughed it, right? Um, so the Lord says that he wanted those 300 men out of those 10,000 men he selected the 300 men who did um the the who retained who brought up the water right and they left it so again this was less than one percent of the 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 army original army of 32,000 but you know the lord said i only need 300 men and Gideon was probably freaking out, you know, any one of us would have been like, what are you talking about? I'm about to go fight against 135,000 men and you're telling me I only need 300 men. But again, the Lord 
moves when things seem impossible. Nothing is impossible for the Lord. You know, what seems impossible for man is not impossible for the Lord. So it says here that Gideon had doubt. Wouldn't you have doubt? I would have doubt. I'd be like, what are you? I mean, I would say like 300 men against, you know, the multitude, right? If you remember in verse, um, let me go back to verse 12 just to explain it a little more. It says, And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude, and their camels were without number as the sand by the sea side for multitude. So again, this just gives us a visual of how many of them there were. You know, the sand of the sea, if you go to the beach, it's like sand's like one little grain. I mean, it's super tiny. And the one little bunch that you get, there's like a whole bunch of, of, of grains of sand, right? But it's just giving us a visual that there was so many of them. There were, if, if for Gideon, it just seemed like this is a lot of people, right? And so the Lord's just giving us that visual of how, there were so many, and in Gideon's eyes, he was just like, it seemed impossible, right? Again, it was 135,000 men, the Lord's word says. Um, so he was fearful. He doubted. He's like, you're leaving me with 300 men against all this army. But God was sending him to defeat the enemy with only 300 men. God knew what he was doing, right? And um, the word of God says that Gideon was doubtful. Gideon was doubtful and he needed um, just encouragement. He needed encouragement to overcome his fears and his doubts. Okay, so that's where the Bible tells us that the Lord said, get up, it's time. And if you're still fearful, go down with your servant. So he said, instead of fighting with the, instead of initiating a fight, because, you know, God doesn't like doubt, right? The doubt cannot be in the way of, of, our, of our spiritual battles it can't be in the way of, of of just doing things when we like doubt keeps us from doing what the Lord wants us to do so the Lord said I can't have you have doubt I need you to get affirmation that I am with you right and and in Gideon's case he said go down with your servant go down they were to go and spy uh, at the edge of the the um you know the tent or and and see that I am with you. So it says that Gideon was fearful because he took his servant with him and he went down to the edge of the army camp and he listened in into a tent, okay? Um, and in our case, we have doubt sometimes. You know, sometimes, especially those of us, when the Lord speaks to our heart, you know, when the Lord tells us to do something, um, we have doubt. We're like, what do you want me to do, right? Like, what did you just tell me, Lord, you know? Um, and we have doubt. And let me tell you guys that doubt, um, we need we need to get doubt out of our out of our lives in order to overcome our fears. And the way to do that again is finding encouragement um, in prayer. When you have doubt, don't let the devil put doubt in your life because then you're not going to accomplish anything. You know, if you set a goal, and the Lord has has. Um, place that goal in your life and you have doubt don't don't have any doubt if there's something that you've been praying to the lord and the lord answers you about doing it and then all of a sudden you have doubt don't have doubt instead i encourage you to um you know ask the lord for for a sign like gideon gideon had doubt but he's like you know help me like i don't I, how do you want me to defeat 135,000 men with 300 people like how and the Lord said, but he cried. He was talking to the Lord, right? And the Lord said, go. So the Lord said, go and do this so you know that I'm with you. So you need to find yourself in the situations. When you do find yourself in doubtful situations, pray to the Lord. Talk to him and say, Lord, like, how is this possible? And the Lord will give you a sign. But it takes prayer. It takes intercession for you to be able to hear the Lord's voice. You need to pray and not just go about your own way and say, I got this. No, because if you're not sure and you don't know if the Lord wants you to do that, then it's best that you stop and ask the Lord for, for um, affirmation. Ask him in prayer to guide you and to show you. Amen. And that's exactly what Gideon did. And then it says that in order for God to give Gideon um, encouragement, God actually sent him to the camp. He sent him to the camp of the enemy, again with Pharaoh, because he was scared, right? 
um, to spy. So they were spying on the enemy. And again, um, it says that spying on the enemy was something that would have made perfect sense to Gideon. Okay. Um, but it didn't make sense. It's like, you want me to go spy on the enemy that I'm about to defeat, right? But the Lord, again, does things differently. He doesn't do it the way we want. We feel that it needs to be done. And that's where the Lord tests us. That's where the Lord, um, you know, takes away our doubt. When we see things happen uh, that didn't seem possible, that's when we are, like, encouraged the most, right? When we know, like, whoa, Lord, you are totally here because this would not be possible if it wasn't for you, right? So the Lord said, go and spy on the enemy and be reassured. So, again, that was just odd to Gideon, but Gideon obeyed. The best thing here and the key here was that Gideon obeyed. Gideon asked for the Lord's affirmation. The Lord said, go spy on the enemy. And Gideon obeyed. And that's good. Because when Gideon obeyed, he was able to see and get confirmation that the Lord was with him. So when the Lord speaks to you, obey. It's best that you obey. Even when you think it makes no sense, obey. Amen. So, Instead of encouraging um, and, and um, Gideon, okay, right? When Gideon goes to the army, he sees this whole army. He's like, wait, how is this supposed to encourage me? How is this supposed to, like, make me feel any better that I have 300 men against 135,000 men, right? But it says that the uh, Lord said, go, so Gideon went, he obeyed, and he went to the camp, and he, he, he actually, the Lord sent him to this one tent. There was so many tents, but the Lord knows, okay? The Lord's leading his steps, so he sends him to this one tent. And it's nighttime, so Gideon's fine. And it says that Gideon, you know, he was listening. There was two men in the tent. At least that's what the Word of God says in this. I mean, there may have been more, but there was two men who were speaking. One of the men was actually telling the other men about an, a dream that he had. And we see that in verse um, 15. Was, we see how one of the men is telling the other man about a, about a dream he has. And it says I hear that, um, and it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream. So he got there right at the perfect moment. See how God worked? He got there at the perfect moment to hear the one man tell the other man about the dream. And it was a perfect tent. It was a right tent. It was just divi God's divine time. Divine time. And that's what it takes. We, we allow the Lord to lead us. He puts us in the right place at the right time. Nothing's by coincidence. Amen. He does everything with m m much sense. And it says here that as Gideon got to the tent, um, he was going to see how uh, the power of the Lord um, just moved. And it says, when Gideon got to the camp where he overheard two soldiers talking, one soldier was telling, telling the other about something he had seen in a dream. In his dream, a cake of barley bread had rolled into the camp of the Midianite army. The bread had struck a tent in the camp and totally flattened it. Okay, so again... God's plan is not only revealed to, to Gideon first, but it's revealed to the enemy first. So you see how God works? God's already dealing with the enemy. And here's Gideon like stressing out. But God already has, he's already dealing. He's already doing work, things behind the, the scenes. He's already, you know, he's showing the enemy what's going to happen before Gideon even knows. So it's isn't that amazing how the enemy knows God's plan before, you know, Gideon does. I mean, God's giving, you know, he's pretty much showing the men, like, this is what's going to happen, right? And the men are the enemy. So I just want to pause here and take a moment. Because it's interesting how the enemy already knows what Gideon is going to do. Do you find yourself sometimes in situations where, you know, you feel the Lord's placed something in your heart and you have doubt, right? But I want to reassure you that with the Lord by your side, all things are possible. And the enemy 
knows our our strength, what we're capable of. And that's why you find yourself in so much, um, so many trials sometimes, or not so many trials, but so much op- uh, um, uh, um, oppression, you know, where something just keeps coming against you and against you. And the Lord's placed something in your heart. The Lord's either tell you, you're going to preach, you're going to sing, you're going to teach, you're going to go and help with Sunday school. You're going to go and help, you know, with the youth group, you're gonna go and help, you know, I don't, and cleaning, like, like you have your heart set to do work for the Lord, or you're gonna go and join the Bible club at, at school, or you're gonna go and do this at school, right? Like the Lord's placed something in your heart because you've never done that though, or because you've you've never seen yourself in that way, right? Getting into and see himself as a warrior, you know, Gideon was an ordinary guy, right? Um, but because you don't see yourself in the situation, even though God calls you, in this case, Gideon called, I mean, God called Gideon. Even though you know what God's placed in your heart because you've prayed to him and he's revealed to you, but you're like, how is that possible? Like, that's not even me. Like, I'm not going to, like, how am I supposed to preach? Or how am I supposed to sing? Or how am I supposed to, like, you know, play the drums? You know, it, you find yourself in this situation where you're just like, why me? You know, or how am I supposed to speak against the, the, you know, the most popular group on campus? Or how am I supposed to go and tell my boss this, right? But if the Lord places in your heart, be ready because God's already working behind the scenes. God's already setting up the game plan. God's already setting up the steps, right? God's already putting everything in place. And all he needs you to do is take that step of obedience. When you take that step of obedience, you spark that plan in place because you're the main character and God set up the the setting for you, right? He knows where the climax is at, right? He knows where the oppression is going to come in, but it takes you, the main character, to surrender what you think, the doubt, right? The doubt, Gideon had doubt. And it takes you to continuously seek the Lord's reassurance in order to surrender that doubt and move forward, right? You have to get rid of the doubt in order to move forward. With doubt keeping you back, that plan, that setting, that book, that chapter in your life that God has already put in place is never going to come to be if you, the main character, does not obey and walk forward. If you don't, if the main character is not, we know by reading books, if there's no main character, there's no story. You need a main character. You need someone to take action. You need someone to follow as you're reading, right? So the enemy in this case already knows the plan because God's setting it up, you know? And we know that all things in this world are, are um, even the enemy, right? We know that all things in this world are, are, even though people don't want to accept it, right? But we know that all things in this world um, happen because of God, you know? Um, meaning, um he oversees everything he he he's like he's the one that approves it right and and when the lord already has something set for you it's best you obey because if you don't obey that setting that part of your story that that chapter in your life will never come to be because you failed to move forward in it when the lord had already placed it in your heart so you need to be obedient and don't have doubt even when things seem impossible that's when the Lord moves best because he, you can, the, at the end of the chapter, at the end of the day, you're like, wow, this just happened because God was in the, in, in the midst of it, right? So again, I'm back to Gideon. So it says, Gideon was hearing the soldier and he, the soldier was telling the other one about a dream. And again, in his dream, a cake of barley bread rolled into the camp of the Midianite. And the bread had struck a tent in the camp and totally flattened it. So again, the enemy is already aware of God's plan before Gideon is. But Gideon has, has to hear it, has to hear it, right? He wanted reassurance. So the man who had dreamed the dream did not know what it meant. But the other soldier in the tent was convinced he knew its meaning and it was ominous for them. It says, he said that the loaf of barley bread was Gideon of Israel and the flattened tent meant that Gideon would defeat the Midianites in battle. The enemy not only knew that they were going to be defeated, but he knew the name of the man that was going to do it. Isn't that so interesting? 
The enemy knows your name. The enemy knows what you're capable of because the Lord reveals it. So it takes you to leave doubt off to the side and know that you are capable of doing things when God is by your side or when God is with you. Because the word of God tells us that the Holy Spirit, when you give your life to the Lord, um, it, uh, that means you're surrendering your life. You're saying, Lord, my dreams... My plans are out of the picture. Whatever it is that you want for me, I accept. That's what happens when you surrender your life to the Lord. But you, it's the best thing ever because the Lord does things for you that you I, I, you wouldn't even. It's like, how was I ever going to be able to do this on my own, right? So when you give your life to the Lord, that's what you're doing. You're surrendering everything to Him, right? And And it's funny here because the enemy already knows what you're capable of even before you yourself know. And so we need to take doubt out of our head when the Lord places something in our eyes, I mean, in our hands, I mean, our hearts, sorry, I apologize, but in everything, in our whole bodies, right? And move forward with what the Lord has told us to do. And, as, and it says, um, He declared that into his hands has God delivered the Midian and all the hosts. So again, one had the dream, one of the enemy guys had the dream, and the other one's telling him the interpretation of what it meant. So Gideon, you remember, is outside listening this whole time, right? And Gideon had undoubtedly gained a reputation among his own people as a leader and one who could gather and inspire an army. But he would have been shocked that the Midianite soldiers even knew his name. So again, Gideon, okay, he finally, when he was called, he's like, okay, I've been called, right? And the, the soldiers knew that Gideon was going to lead them against the army. But when he finds out that the enemy knows his name, he's like, whoa, like, how do you guys know about me? Right? Because you need to remember, Gideon was just a common kid or a common guy. He, didn't, he wasn't a military leader. He wasn't known for fighting against armies. He was just a common guy who had just obeyed. And so he was just caught. He was like, he caught off guard. Like, whoa, how does he, how does the enemy know my name? Right? And um, it says here that he must have been surprised to hear an enemy soldier admit that his own army was about to be defeated by a man empowered by the God. Sorry, empowered by a man. Sorry, defeated by a man empowered by the God of Israel. So not only that was he surprised that the enemy knew his name, but the fact that the enemy already knew that they were going to be defeated. That was just like, wow, right? It's like, whoa, you know? Um, so remember that the enemy, that's why you have so much battle against coming against you. That's why you're always trying to figure out like, man, why is this like one thing after another, after another? It's because the enemy knows what you're capable of in God's hands on your own, nothing. But as soon as you let go of, of your, of your, um, self will and you give it to the Lord, you're it's so much that the Lord will do with you and then the enemy knows that which is why you constantly have so much tribulation coming against you right you need to surrender and let the Lord take the reins and it says because of this right Gideon was greatly encouraged by the dream and this interpretation it was a sign from God that gave him the courage and boldness he needed to follow his instructions and attack the mighty enemy army he worshiped the Lord and turned to his camp. So Gideon got his confirmation that he had asked the Lord for. Amen. So from that time, <clears throat> from time to time, we all need encouragement. And that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. If there's things that God puts in your heart and you need to go to someone for encouragement, that's not bad at all. That's not bad when you ask someone to pray with you or to help you. Um, but just make sure that the Lord is, a per is the one who's putting that person in, in place to encourage you. Make sure you listen to what the Lord has to tell you, right? Um, and it lets us know that sometimes encouragement can come from someone telling us, Hey, you know, brother, hey, sister, this is what the Lord told me. This is what the Lord has in place for you. Sometimes in prayer, sometimes someone can just call you and, you know, just tell you something that you had asked the Lord for. Um, it's just, it's just amazing how the Lord works. Sometimes the enemy, the one, the, the person that you least think is the one that affirms God's plan for you. Amen. So again, Gideon was ready. Gideon was ready to, to follow through with the strategy that the Lord had given them. Even though he only had 300 men, he was ready to defeat 135,000 men. So 
it says here, Gideon, again, uh, Gideon only had 300 men, excuse me, and um, he knew what the Lord had already asked him to do. So the Holy Spirit shines, right? The Holy Spirit shines in our weakness. The Holy Spirit is able to continue moving us forward in our weakness as long as we obey and allow the Lord to um, to help us, to guide us, right? Uh, we can attack the enemy when he leads, expects it. So let's go ahead and continue. So now Gideon's encouraged. The Lord has told him, hey, <clears throat> you're ready. Look what the enemy is saying. They know they're going to be defeated. So Gideon is super encouraged. So he goes back to the army. He has 300 men. He divides those 300 men into three groups of 100 each. And he lets them know that he's going to be guiding them and they are to follow, right? So the, the soldiers are ready. The soldiers, you know, see how their leaders encourage and, and they're trusting that, you know, God's going to help them, right? Now, it says, um, the soldiers were not going to go into the um, this uh, fight the way we usually see it. Again, remember God works in miraculous ways. He works in ways that humans can't think of, right? Um, or not that can't think of, but don't find it possible. So, it says that Gideon's soldiers were armed. They were armed differently though let us read here it says that each man had a trumpet in one hand and a lamp or torch in the other hand okay the trumpet was actually a ram's horn called a shofar the lamp was encased in an earthenware pitcher so again we had this lamp with a pitcher and this lamp was inside of a pitcher so think of a pitcher like maybe like a drinking pitcher but obviously in that time they were made of clay okay um, so they had a lamp in the pitcher. So the flame would not be seen. So again, the flame was hidden inside the pitcher just until the right time. So this soul, these, this, and this army of Gideon, these 300 soldiers, they had no sword, they had no spear, they had no bow and arrows. They had only a lamp on one side, right? Because they had the pitcher with the fire inside of it and the trumpet. So the trumpet was to make noise, right? So... I want to stop here because the Lord kind of, the Lord placed in my heart, he's like, the trumpet, right? We know a trumpet makes sound, right? And, and you can use the trumpet to worship the Lord. And we know that the pitcher, if you understand, uh, if you've allowed, if you've surrendered your life to the Lord, you know that you become a vessel and that when you become a vessel for the Lord, the word of God tells us that the Holy Spirit comes and he reigns or he comes and he moves into our life. He, he, we just be, pretty much become this temple, right? We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. So as soon as we give our life to the Lord, that ho the Holy Spirit comes and he lives in us, right? Um, and he's there to guide us. He's there to help us so that as we continue our walk with the Lord, the Holy Spirit teaches us how to live for the Lord. Amen. And he teaches us what's right from wrong. And I told you guys in the past that whenever you know that you've done something, you get that, that like ring in your heart or your chest, or just, you're just like, man, I wasn't supposed to do that. Well, that's the Holy Spirit who's telling you like, you did that wrong. Like, that's not the way you were supposed to do that. Or you just lied or you knew you weren't supposed to do that. Right. That you, you, the Holy Spirit just comes and tells you like, uh, uh, that wasn't right. Right. And you need to remember that's a sign to ask the Lord for forgiveness. So. Anyway, so the Lord was telling me, when you, when us in our own battles, whether, you know, we're going through a hard time, whether we're depressed or we just don't find ourselves up for, for anything in the mornings, maybe in the afternoons, whenever you find yourself oppressed or in this case, you know, like they were oppressed by the enemy, the Lord was showing me that the trumpet worship, when you sing, when you sing, there's it's something in the spiritual realms that happens, something that we can't see, right? But we know by faith that there's a war in place spiritually. And so when you sing to the Lord, when you worship the Lord, like the trumpet here, chains start to break. Things start to fall, right? The enemy begins to be defeated. Um, and the lamp, okay, we are the vessels, right? Just like that pitcher, we're a vessel, and the lamp is the Holy Spirit. So in this case, you know, Gideon was going into war with the trumpet, 
and with the vessel or the the pitcher with the lamp, the fire inside. Amen. Isn't that beautiful to know that we're a vessel who, when worshiping things, you know, the Holy Spirit just moves. Amen. And it says that when when um, the Spirit of the Lord moves, great things happen. Right. Um, so it says again that they were going in with no bow and arrows, no spears, no swords. They only had their lamp and their trumpet. And again, God moves in impossible ways or unreasonable ways. This would have been like, are you kidding me? I'm going to go fight 135,000 people with a trumpet and with, with, um, with uh, you know, a pitcher. Uh, but yeah. That's exactly what God told Gideon to do and his men. So Gideon followed the example and he went with it. And it says here that um, they were to attack the enemy, blow their trumpets, and shout the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So who was before Gideon? The Lord. The Lord was the one who was defeating the enemy. It wasn't Gideon, it was the Lord. Amen. And it says that very night at the beginning of the middle watch, again, very strategic. The middle watch means that um, usually in, in the military, I mean, I've never been in the military, but I know they have different watches, right? Um, when they're camping out, there's always like a cycle. You know, one person goes from like 12 to 4 a.m. and then from 4 a.m. to, you know, 8 a.m. But in this case, um, their watch, it says that in this case, in the Midianites case, um, the Midianites had a watch, right? They're watching for enemies because they had a camp, so they're watching out. And uh, it says here that the Midianites um, were about to uh, have a switch or transition in their watch. So they had someone who had already started from 6 to 10, just to give us an example, um, and those four hours were up. So at the 10 o'clock mark, there was going to be a transition in, in, the, in the watch guards. And it was in that time when the Gideon, Gideon and the army attacked in that transition when they least expected it, when the army least expected it, right? When the, military, when the Midianites least expected it was when the, the um, Gideon attacked. So again, the guardmen were transitioning. There was no one watching. It was in the enemy, when the enemy lost eyesight that God attacked and that's exactly what happened here um, so it says that as soon as those guards were arriving to their posts the sudden attack happened okay it's when they least expected it that God attacked and it was timed perfectly so at that time the trumpet blast so again they, they blew those trumpets Gideon's men blew the trumpets and those trumpets caused confusion and the lamps, they broke, remember, they were hidden in, 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 the, in the pictures, right? But when the, the trumpet sounded, they broke those vessels and all you could see was fire, the fire, the glow, remember? And suddenly the lamps were visible when the pictures were broken. So when we allow the Holy Spirit to take control we no longer, it's no longer us, but it's a Holy Spirit who is attacking. It is a Holy Spirit who has the control. So again, it is through our worship. It's through our, our, our resignation of ourselves. It's through that spiritual realm, through our worship, as we ask the Lord to help us, to guide us. But as we honor Him and as we glorify Him and as we, we put Him first, that the Holy Spirit, those vessels break and the Holy Spirit takes control. The Holy Spirit shines. The Holy Spirit does what it has to do. So we need to remember that when we honor and we worship the Lord, when we put Him first, when we glorify Him, when we exalt Him, that it is then that the Holy Spirit just shines and does what he has to do and that's exactly what happened in this army it says that when those pictures were broken this added confusion because it's like whoa you're just a man but wait what like there's this glow there right and the war cry was a finishing touch what was the war cry it says here that even though they were it says even though the word um, even though they were discomfited. So again, the Mil the Midianites were confused. They were just like, what? They didn't feel comfortable. They were just like, what is going on? There's a noise. There's a sound. And there's a, a glow. They were so confused, right? And it says that um, they were made weak. They were made weak in their fear. They were just like, what is going on, right? Again, there's sound. There's glow. They were made weak. And it says that the confusion 
Um, and it was just a confusion that took that took over, and that confusion caused fear in the enemy. And um, this again, the Lord, as I said, the Lord moves in different ways. Um, so He tells us what to do because He knows what's going to happen when we do it, right? So we we have to do what God tells us to do because as we do what He tells us to to, to do, everything just works perfectly. And so here we know that as we move in faith, it produces faith, right? We know that the results are also how our faith, um, so as we move in faith, we're gaining that faith and that faith creates action. And when we that action happens, the Lord just does the impossible and, and the enemy is defeated. And it says here, Gideon and the Israelites did not defeat the Midianites because they had overwhelming numbers. Remember, the the Gideon's army was only three hundred, right? Um, so again, when there was confusion, the word of the Lord tells us that every Midianite went against each other. They pretty much fought themselves because they were so confused, and they killed themselves. And it says here that. Um, Gideon did not defeat the Midianites because they used better weapons or because they were larger in number or because they had brilliant tactics. They did not defeat the Midianites because they were fierce warriors. Remember, these were common people, especially Gideon. Gideon had never been a warrior. And they did not defeat the Midianites because they broke the lamps, blew their trumpets, or shrouded the war, war cry. The simple truth is, truth is that they defeated the Midianites because they trusted and obeyed the Lord. Even though every single step of the way seemed like this is odd, they were obedient, okay? And they had faith that God was going to lead them. So it, it's just amazing how the Lord works, right? When we allow Him to take control, when we worship, when we worship, when we seek Him, when we when we honor Him, how how the Holy Spirit takes control of every step of the way. And we are to trust God because when people trust God, things happen for the good, right? Even though if it seems unreasonable, the Lord moves in mighty ways and God just wants us to trust Him. He wants us to obey Him when we feel that it doesn't seem right. Just have faith and know that He is in the midst and remember, you need to remember that the enemy already knows what you're capable of. The enemy knows. So why be afraid with the Lord by your side? If you have doubt, that's fine. But ask the Lord to continuously guide you and help you and reassure you. And that's perfectly fine. But you need to obey. You need to obey and make sure that you continue to do what the Lord tells you to do. Because you need to remember that what seems impossible is, is possible with God. So I hope this lesson helps you understand that sometimes God may tell us to do something that does not make sense to us, right? It just makes no sense. However, if you trust God and if you obey Him and you have faith in Him, you will see that the outcome of what the Lord has asked you to do is always best for not only you, but those around you. Amen. Um, it's just the best thing to do. In my case, I, I'm going to share. I know I've gone longer, and I usually go long, and I apologize because I know you guys have things to do. But in my case, um, I, I uh, as you guys know or you've heard, I, I'm, um, I'm a Bible club advisor at the high school that I teach at. And um, it's not something that I was seeking to do. As a matter of fact, when when the Lord placed it in my heart, I wasn't even um, I wasn't even a, a school teacher. When I decided to teach, when I moved to the high school, I used to be a middle school teacher for seven years, right? And when I decided to go to the high school, I wasn't going to teach. I was going to take a special assignment. Um, and what that means is I was a teacher on special assignment. So what that means is that I wasn't going to teach on a daily basis. I was actually going to work in the office. So I was a teacher, but I had a special assignment as um, an office, you know, uh, administrator. So I was just going to go ahead and help the administrators with an office uh, on campus. And so I remember it was my third year um, the Lord placed it in my heart. I had been there for three years at the high school. And again, I wasn't in the classroom 
but I, I, I knew of, of a pastor who would come on campus and, and teach kids about, about God. He would come and just do his Bible study with them. And so it was, I remember it was June. I remember it was perfectly. I had seen him, right? Um, and I said, I, I was in a meeting, to be honest with you. I was in a meeting because my job consisted of just meetings um, on a daily basis. So I remember I was in a meeting, but I had seen him. And I took time from me, my meeting to say, um, I told, as the, the pastor was coming on campus, I said, I need to speak to you. Make sure you come, you know, to my office so that I can speak to you. Because the Lord had placed this in my heart. I didn't know him. I didn't know him. But the Lord had placed it in my heart. And I had doubt because the Lord had actually been telling me since um, March. And again, remember, this was in June when I finally had the courage to say, hey, I need to speak to you. Um, so I remember that I didn't know. Like, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I was working in the office. Um, but it's interesting because I get all, like, to hear it because I know how the Lord works. It's amazing to see how the Lord works. But I knew that what the Lord had placed in my heart, and I had to be obedient. And even though it was from March to June, I did it. And I said, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. I work in the office. I don't know what you want me to do, but I'm going to do it, right? So I remember that um, the the pastor, when he was done doing what he had to do, he came and he, um, he we spoke, and I said, I remember, and he remembers too, because he always reminds me, but he, I'm happy that he reminds me, because he reminds me of what the Lord has done, amen, and I know what the Lord has done, and I remember I said, I said, look, I don't know you, I know you come on this campus, I know you work with kids, I, I had no idea how it worked, and I said, but the Lord's placed this in my heart, you know, the Holy Spirit's really guiding me to, to just open my door, open, open myself as an individual to help you, right and I remember when I told him that and me myself like I just felt the spirit of the Lord was like um confirming that you know because I felt it in my heart and, and I remember when he when he heard that from me he's like wow like because he had been praying he had been praying for the Lord to to send someone to help him and I remember that we both got teary and we just knew we knew it was the Lord who was moving and um it, I didn't know how it was going to be possible because I had this office job, right? And I wasn't working in the classroom with kids. I was solely working with adults in an office. And I said, but the Lord wants me to do this, so I'm going to be obedient. And I don't know how, I, I remember telling him, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how this is going to work, but I just know I have to do what the Lord's placed in my heart. And I remember the fourth year I was still in the office and it just happened. You know, it was hard. It was hard, guys, because we only had three kids, right? I mean, we needed 10 people to start a club and we only had three. Um, and I remember that we prayed. I remember we tried to recruit. We tried to figure out what to do, right? Because um, Bible study or just being a Christian on campus is not a popular thing. And I want to... Um, I want to encourage you guys to stand up, to stand up, and, and even though it's not the popular thing, stand up and be obedient to what God wants you to do, because it's the best thing that can happen, right? So I, anyways, to make a long story short, because I know you guys have to go, but we started off with three kids, and I remember that um, we went to the center of the cafeteria, the campus, pretty much, and we prayed. We prayed in a circle, the three of us, it was the three it was three girls, uh, me and Pastor, um, and we prayed, and then we felt the Lord move. We felt the Lord move, and we knew that the Lord was going to do something beautiful. And sure enough, um, the end of my fourth year in the office, we had about, um, I want to say close to 20 kids, right, who were coming together with us and, and um, coming to this Bible study. And I remember that... Uh, it was amazing to see how many or a few of our students were, were cutting, right? Um, the devil really uh, messes with the, with individuals who were, they were cutting. Um, some have suicidal thoughts. Um, just in, they were just in, in oppression. It was, they were in darkness, right? And that, that, that let me know, the Lord showed me, you know, there, there's a move that I need to do here, but in order to do that, I, I need an obedience. And I was so happy to see how the Lord was moving in these kids' lives. And and this last year was our um, fifth year. Oh, actually, the, the, the club, second year of me advising, right? But it's been amazing to see what the Lord has done. He, the Lord placed me back in the classroom, right? Because I was like, Lord, like this is not possible. And the Lord put me back in the classroom. 
Um, and for many, it seems like a demotion, but for me, it was like, it was where I had to be. It was where I had to be because I know what my purpose is on that campus. Now, I know that my purpose is to, to, um, allow the Lord to move in these kids' lives and give them hope and understanding of, of what God's capable of doing. Amen. So be obedient. There's more to this story, but maybe at another time, because I know I've already gone past an hour, but be obedient. Be obedient to what God's going to do, because when it seems impossible, um, the Lord moves. The Lord moves, and, and you can just sit back and be like, wow, God, this is all you. This is all you, because there's no way that me or or pastor, you know, that one that helps helps me lead the club, would be capable of doing what he does. He just opened doors like never before. Amen. So just keep moving. Don't lose faith. Um, just, just you know, be like Gideon. If you need reassurance, get it. But when you get reassurance, remember that even the enemy knows what you're capable of. So you need to make sure that you follow through and have faith in what the Lord's going to do. And always worship. Worship. Because when you worship, the Holy Spirit moves. Your vessel, your flesh is off to the side and the Holy Spirit moves. So God bless you guys. I hope this lesson was, um, uh, you know, of encouragement. And I um, hope to see you guys soon. Okay. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.